Hello friends. In this video, we are going to be talking about HS error pit file. Whenever JVM crashes, it generates this HS error pit file. See, right, this HS error pit file does not contain all the information that's going to tell you what made it to crash and what made the application to go down, but it's going to leave you kind of a breadcrumbs. It's going to give you kind of hints or the details what led the JVM to crash. So that's what we're going to be discussing now. So where is this HS error pit file is created? Friends, in case to your Java application, if you have configured that XX error file and given the file location path, then that is the location where this HS error pit file is going to be created. If this XX error file is not present in your Java application argument, then what's going to happen is the file, this HS error pit file is going to be created in the working directory where the JVM was launched. And in case due to lack of uh, permission or any lack of disk space, if this file cannot be created in the working directory, it's going to be created in the temporary directory of on the device in which your JVM was running. Okay. So now, how to read this file? Right. So this is a text file. So you can open any text editor and then you can look at it. We can still do, but the information would not be very clear and cryptic. So you want to use like a tools like a fast thread. So in this session, we will see how to read a HS output file using the fast thread tool. So now let's go to fastthread.io. It is a free service. You can do a limited, there is a free tier. You can do a limited number of free analysis. So now let me just sign in. I'm signing in. Okay, once I sign in, then I just need to upload my HS error pit file. So let me upload it. So I have it here. Okay, so once I upload it, instantly this file is analyzed and the report is generated. At the very top, it gives you kind of an overview. It tells you the kind of what JRE version in which this application was running on. It was running on 8.0. And what is the name of this HS error pit file? And this tells me the time at which the application crashed. So this application crashed on Tuesday, September 26, 2023 at 6 a.m. in the morning. And then this tells me elapsed time. That is three hours and 42 minutes after the JVM was launched. Then that's when it crashed. Okay. Friends, the next section tells you what is the reason for it to crash. See, um, at the very first, it tells you like a SIG SEGV. And sometimes if it crashed because of out of memory error, you're going to see it as out of memory error. There are a few types of reasons. What are those reasons are and what is the explanation for that? We have given it in the description. The, the link has been given in the description. You can click and then see it. But this is okay information, but this is not very important for us to understand, right? And the next section is the EAP size. So this tells what was your JVM's size, memory utilization was. It gives you by the regions. What was my young generation size, old generation size, and meta space size, what it was. So in this case, the overall EAP size was 43 gig, and only 18 gig was used. So in case if you're going to have some memory related issues, it can, it will max out, right? You're going to see the used and the allocated to be almost maxing out. Right? And the next one, section tells you what code or the library that this application was executing at the time of crash, right? Sometimes it may not be present in this, in this example, it's not present, but however, in few other cases, you are going to see, like say you're going to see, it's, it may report the line of code it was executing. You can see like this com buggy app, this story content push processor, this method, this is what it was executing. And sometimes it can tell you the library. It was, it was executing these library. It can be present here. Right? Okay. Now moving along, the most important section, in my opinion at least, is what is the active thread? This is that section. That is what is the thread that was executing at the time of crash. So here, at the time of crash, you can see there's a quad scheduler thread which was executing. And this is the code path in which it was executing. You can see this application was started out and it is executing. And now you can see it is using a SAP connector. It was using a SAP driver to talk with the back end system, to kind of talk with the back SAP system. And this driver, apparently what has happened for in this case was running on a very old version of the code. So it was not compatible with, with the new operating system in which this application migrated. So that's when this crash happened. So once seeing the C here, I can see it's a COM SAP connection, right? So once we upgraded this driver, 
then the problem went away. So you want to be focusing on this active threat, right? Okay, moving along. Sometimes when the crash happens, a core dump might be generated. And where is the path in which the core dump is returned into is going to be specified here in case the core dump was generated. Okay. And the next section is all threads, right? So this tells all the threads that were there in the application at the time of crash. So at the very uh, top here, it says the total thread count. Here you can see there are like a 1,464 threads were there in the application at the time of crash. And here you can see it, it's not going to give you all the stack trace of all the threads, but it's going to give you the name of the thread and whether what state it is and what type of thread it is, whether it's a Java thread or native thread. So by see, the, there is a clue for us, right? Here I can see there's a lot of threads with this IO dispatcher. Like you can see this IO dispatcher 1208, IO dispatcher 1207. These are all the thread names. So by looking at the thread names, you can see whether there's any particular thread pool is growing or whether any th thread pool is shrinking, right? You can get the kind of a eye level sense. You can see there is a like 1,400 plus threads are reported. What is the name? What is the state? And what type of thread it is, right? Okay. So now the next section is, what are the arguments with which this application was launched? What are the JVM arguments with which it was launched? So you can take a look at it. And then the next one is, it tells you the environment variables. That is, what is the path? What is the Java home, the class path? The environment variables in which the application was running on. So we get to see. And the next section shows all the libraries that this application was using. Like say if you're going to use any third party frameworks, Spring Boot, uh, Apache, those kind of stuff, it's going to be reported and also any DLLs or the shared objects, the native libraries, that's all going to be reported here. So you have this information. And then the next section is it's going to give you a system level information. If you're running on a container or if you're running uh, running on a device, it tells you what is the operating system in which this application was running on and what is the total memory on the device and how much was it used and what is the CPU configuration and what is the JVM information. You get to see them. Right? The next one is we get to see the events exception. That is the events information. That is what are the recent exceptions that happened in the application before it crashed. You can see from here, this application was suffering from these exceptions, right? I, I, I can get to see. And then uh, it also we, it also presents you what are the uh, de-optimization events. That is, JVM sometimes de-optimizes the code for a better performance. And similarly, like our classes gets redefined because of the bytecode instrumentation. If APM is running, right, they try to, when APM is running, they try to redefine our class definitions. So what are the recent class definitions that was redefined? I get to see them. And here is what are the recent compilation events that happened within the code at the, at the time of before the crash. So we get to see all this information. So HS error print does not give you a kind of a complete information what made it to crash, but it gives you kind of a hints or the breadcrumbs what led it to crash, right? So this will come handy when you're trying to diagnose the JVM crashes. Okay, friends. Thank you very much. If you happen to like this video and if you want to learn more about Java performance and troubleshooting, you are welcome to attend my master class, which the link for that is given in the description. Thank you guys.